what is this, 107? Mm hmm. What are we learning today? Transistors. Oh. Something you don't want to miss. Well, we're putting it on video, so. <coughs> Whoever's not here is actually sort of here, but not really. Transistor So three terminals. All right. Transistor has three terminals to it. In person. They look like this. And any one of them will have a 2N XXXX number something along those lines. There are other ways of describing them, but 2N indicates typically a transistor. And they'll have a four-digit number. Whatever that four-digit number is, is what you have to look into the data sheet to figure out, is it collector base emitter, base collector emitter, emitter base collector? You don't know until you look at the data sheet. That's why a lot of engineers and technicians and whatnot will pick a specific value or type of transistor that they kind of go to all the time. There are some values that are really, really common and some that are kind of special use only. Mm -hmm. So the one that we'll probably spend the most time with is a 2N2222, that boxes of them. Oh, that's why we'll spend so much time with them? Well, we'll spend time with them just because they're very commonly used. Okay. Very so, you know, if you're out in, in somewhere in the industry and you need a just general purpose, hey, Joe, you got a transistor? Well, say, Chances yeah, are they're probably going to toss you 2N2222. There's also other ones, 3907, 3906. There's different families of transistors, but they all basically function the same way. Okay. They transfer resistance. So in order to look at how these things work, let's go ahead and redraw this. And we are going to IE for emitter current, IC for the collector current, and IB for the base current. According to Kirchhoff's current law, what must be true in this circuit? They must all match to the voltage. It has nothing to do with Kirchhoff's current law, not voltage law. 
intercept a total oh, current in current? What's that? We have to equal total current. Okay, that's true. But in terms of these three variables, what does Kirchhoff's current law tell us? That uh, either one will equal the other two. Will equal by the other two, they will all. Okay, that's correct. Put it into a formula. Uh, so I, is that three? Was that B? This one? So yeah, IB equals IC plus IE. Okay, that's true. Is there any other ones? IE equals IB and IC. Okay, looking at this one, <coughs> looking at this as a point, we have this going on. Oh. Right, so IB plus IC has to equal IE. Look at the directions of the arrow. So that suggests the equation that we're going to work with here. <coughs> All right. I'm going to go on a virtual virtual field trip. <laughs> you ever been to a museum? Mm -hmm. Or like an aquarium? Sure, I like aquarium. Yeah, aquarium. Customers come in here <laughs> and then you have over here You have tour guides, right? Mm -hmm. <coughs> the concierge disc. What is each tour guide? Actually, let's change this a little bit. Let's put the customers up here. What do the tour guides do? So, show you. The tour guides take the customers and they bring them along. One tour guide. Yeah. Will escort, say, 25 customers. And that word is better. And how many will leave? 26. 25 customers, one tour guide. The customer leaves. Where does the tour guide go? Right back, gets in line hmm. to take another 25 customers. Right? So, over here where the tour guides live is your base of operations. Where the customers come in, they collect money. It's your collector. Down here, the great egress, the exit. Better. So if you think about it as tour guides taking customers through a museum, for every one tour guide you have, you have 25 customers, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm moving one person, and by moving one person, I'm actually moving 25 people, right? Mm -hmm. That's the amplification. My amplification factor here is how much? 25. 25. I'm going to take 25 times as many tour guides and customers that are going to go through here. Each tour guide is going to look at 25 customers 
So if I have five tour guides, I'm going to have 125 customers, right? That's an increase, isn't it? That's amplification or gain. Every base transition creates 25 collector transitions. Therefore, we can say that the gain is equal to 25. I get 25 times out of that thing what I put into it. I guess financially I'm paying the tour guide a dollar and each customer is paying $25 so that single tour guide is giving me a gain of income of 25. I'm making 25 times what I'm giving him because he's delivering me $25 every time he takes a tour group through that museum. You catch on to how that's, that works? Mm -hmm. So making that happen over here, when we talk about gain in the transistor, we might say that beta is equal to 25. Beta is what we call the gain of a transistor. It's the second letter in the Greek alphabet. Which means if I have one milliamp flowing in my base, I'm going to have 26 milliamps here and 25 milliamps here. Beta comes from the data sheet. Is this true? Even though it's sideways, is what we wrote here true? IB plus IC is equal to IE. Mm -hmm. 25 plus 1 is 26. What is the arrow from IB point away from the from IE? Because in order for this to work, we have to have, normally we'll have this attached somewhere to ground, and this will be some positive voltage, because we need to have 0 0.7 volts across the transistor. Haven't gotten there yet, but that's why, because this is going to be a higher voltage than this, and therefore the current's going to flow that way. Typically, with a transistor such as this, in terms of our voltage, and this will answer your question perhaps a little bit better, we're going to typically have a negative voltage here, a positive voltage here, and a higher positive voltage here. So in terms of the higher positive and the regular positive, they, they go into each other? Well, remember, we haven't talked about it yet, but these are diodes in here. So diodes only allow current to flow in one direction, right? So if I have a negative to a positive here, this can actually be represented by a diode. Current's only going to flow in that direction, right? If I have the same thing here, which I do, then current can't flow in that direction. So it forces current to flow in the directions that it needs to flow. But we don't really look at transistors as a combination of diodes. We look at them as a separate component. Mm -hmm. What am I looking at right here where you're saying one milliamp of the uh, uh, current base? Here? 
Yeah, where is that? Uh, where, what is that whole thing you're saying there? That's your base current, mm -hmm. and, and what I'm saying is that that one milliamp is related to this example. Okay. Right, one tour guide, 25 customers. Mm -hmm. One electron coming out the base, okay. 25 electrons coming out the collector. Can I erase that side? Left side? Uh, yes. Mm -hmm. I know some of y'all got here late. I don't want to mm -hmm. cut you off. You're good. Mm -hmm. Okay. Step one, base current. And we'll go ahead and assign this a beta of five. So our amplification factor is going to be five. All right, as I alluded to earlier, with a transistor, you are going to have a diode drop of 0 0.7 volts here, mm -hmm. which means we will have 5 volts there, 0 0.7 volts there, or a total of 4.3 volts across that resistor. Right? right. Yeah. So the base current is mm -hmm. going to be the source voltage minus 0 0.7 divided by R2. And we'll make R2, let's pick a number, let's make it something simple, 100 ohms. <laughs> so 4.3 over 100 ohms should be 43 milliamps, if my math is correct. Is that correct? I don't like to rely on my brain at 66. I like somebody to verify my math for me. Some would say, you're getting too old for this. Hmm. Well, two decimal places over. Should be, right? Should be. Collector current, IC is going to be equal to beta times IB. And our beta is 5 times 43 milliamps. Or 215 
Yes, no? Yes, sir. Exactly. All right, so we have an input, 43 milliamps, and a collector current of 215 milliamps. So we have 215 here. How much do we have here? I sure can. We have 215 milliamps here. How many do I have here? Uh, 215 plus 43? Yes. So would that be 258? Yeah. <clears throat> Do we have amplification? Yeah. 43 milliamps is a lot big, a lot smaller than 215. Mm -hmm. So if I have two, 215 milliamps and I have, let's say, uh, 100 ohms here, I better not make it 100 ohms, I better make it 10. I'll have how much voltage? I is equal, or V is equal to I times R, 215 milliamps times 10 is how much? 2.15 volts. And if I have 2.15 volts here, how much will I have here? 2.15 volts. Now I got 2.15 volts between 5 volts and this point, which means I'm going to have to have 2.85 volts between here and there, so that they add up using Kirchhoff's voltage law to get to 5. That is being used to control this. If we change this resistor and lower it, we end up with more current, which will increase the amount of current that we get here. Because theta of 5 remains the same. Whatever current I have going into the base is the current that I'm going to get out times, or, or a fifth of the current I'm going to get out. Right, so whatever we have coming in here is going to be multiplied by 5. That's the amplification factor. So gain. Here's a generic statement, gain is output over input. Voltage gain is output voltage over input voltage. Current gain is output current over input current. Power gain is power output divided by power input. We, we came up with a couple of formulas. IC is equal to beta times IB, 
Where does beta come from? Data sheet. We also came up with the idea that IE is equal to IB plus IC. And VE is equal to VB minus 0 0.7 volts. That's our diode drop right across here. So these are like the formulas du jour. Again, nothing but arithmetic. I can live with that. Those square roots or exponents, well, that day will come. So this seems really tidy, doesn't it? Huh? What? <laughs> I mean, everything's laid out. There's two resistors in the circuit. How hard can this really be? There's not much to this. It's all predicated on Ohm's law and Kirchhoff's law, basically. That's and Ohm's law, Kirchhoff's laws, is what we've been using to solve these, uh, and that's not going to change. The fact is that when you look at a transistor circuit, and we're going to look at some more of these as we go through this, the transistor is, you know, in this case, it's a big round thing. It's right in the middle. It looks like everything that's attached to it supports it. Yeah. Right? It looks like the transistor is the big boss in the circuit. That's what it looks like. It's a big device. Everything else is attached to it. All roads lead to Rome, right? Yeah. But the reality, and your life will be a whole lot easier if you get this through your head, is that the transistor is actually a slave to all of the other components in the circuit. Everything the transistor does is determined by the resistors and other devices that are attached to it. Think about it this way, when we did this example, what did all our math come from? Almost all of our math came from the components surrounding it and beta. It's the only thing we used was beta. Everything else was resistor voltage current based. So that tells me that in, in determining the functionality of these circuits, the resistors are much more important than the transistor is. In fact, if the circuit is designed properly, in many cases, you can substitute any similar transistor in the circuit and will work functionally the same way. Because the design is really in the support components. The transistor is just a plug and play device that processes the energy that comes through the remainder of the circuit. So don't get yourself conned into thinking that the transistor is all that important. You, you know, I'm kind of looking at him saying, dude, you're replaceable. The design of the resistors is not. Okay, so that will help you um, one thing that will not help you, however, is what I'm going to introduce and what I'm going to conclude with for today. And that is this fella right here, Beta. Can I get rid of, let me get rid of this drawing, I'll leave that up. Okay. Yeah. I have a quick question about... Well, I got a quick answer, but you know what? It would be a lot better if you went first so that my answer matches your question. <laughs> the, uh, <laughs> the, the, one of the, the resistor that, that took 0.7 away into the... The base resistor? Yeah, the yeah. base resistor. Will that always leave 0.7? As long, generally, as long as you have at least 0.7 coming in, it will, because there's nowhere else in that circuit for the current to go. Um. Now you made me forget where I was going. 
beta? Yes. You were taking us on a virtual journey. You've already been there. Oh. <laughs> we're already home. The bus has already left. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we, we, we did that. The tour guide went back. <laughs> Beta. One. <laughs> Different examples have different <clears throat> beta values. depending on age, temperature, and humidity. That makes sense. Data sheet equal big lie. Big lie. Data sheet says it's 25. You probably never find an example of a transistor that has a beta of exactly 25. It can range but up to 35, 45, 55, and down to 10. It all depends on how old it is, how it's been stored. Beta changes over time on the shelf. Okay, so that's a problem. Can you test for beta? Um, yeah, you can at, by building the circuit that we just built. Oh. Right, if you measure, if you know the input current, you know the output current, you can divide them and get beta. Okay. Right, because here, beta is going to be equal to IC over IB. So if you can measure those, you can calculate what beta is. You ever did uh, try to maintain a cocaine habit? Uh, no. Mm -hmm. And uh, <laughs> tried to, or maybe speed, whatever speed. that crank is, that speed. stuff that you, <laughs> whatever that stuff is, you take, you take speed so you can stay up longer, and work harder, make more money to buy more speed so you can work harder, so you can make more money to buy more speed and work harder and make more money to buy more speed and work harder. And then eventually you die. Right? You just go into this endless self-aggravating situation where it just gets worse and worse. All right? We get a runaway situation. So with beta, we have the same thing. Beta doesn't do doesn't, it's not addicted to, to cocaine, but it likes current. <laughs> All right, so you know, beta, the transistor, beta changes with temperature. Beta goes up with temperature. And that's where the screwery begins, because what happens is beta goes up. What happens when beta goes up? The current goes up, right? Bigger beta, bigger current. Right? Yeah? yeah? Beta like current big time. And beta be happy <laughs> current come in. And beta will now. Oh, I'm so happy. It gets vibratory. It gets vibratory, it generates heat. Beta like current. Right? Beta happy generate heat. Mm. <laughs> right? Now, what happens then? It changes the temperature. Heat. When it gets hot, electrons move faster and they move much more easily. So what do we get? More current. More current increases the heat. Beta increases with temperature and it passes more current, which causes it to get hotter which causes beta to increase, which causes more current, which causes it to get hotter, which causes beta to increase. And down the toilet bowl, we go into oblivion at that point, right? Mm -hmm. 
because we've now blown up our transistor because we're asking it now through the heat, we're asking it to conduct more current than it can handle. Mm. Right, and the terminal, you let the smoke out, the terminals get all frizzy and curly, you're pretty much done with that transistor. So, beta changes as the temperature changes. It increases, and that works against us because we get into what's called thermal runaway at that point. That's the technical name for it, is thermal runaway. When getting hot causes more current, which causes more heat, which causes more current, and so on and so forth, just runs itself into the ground. It's not a good situation to be in. So, clearly, clearly, relying on beta to predict how our circuit is going to operate is not a really good plan at all. So, what we're going to have to do, because beta is in our calculations, right? If beta is in our calculations, then that means that the port performance depends on beta, right? If the beta is in the calculations, then the circuit's function depends on it. Do you agree with that? Mm -hmm. So really, what I have to do is find a way to get beta out of my equation so that I'm not going to be using beta in my equation at all. And like any other problem, the way to solve it is to throw more money at it. <laughs> right? So we're going to throw more money at it. We're going to throw one, two, three resistors. Need three more resistors and uh, probably a capacitor. So you have about a dollar. Next lecture, we're going to throw a dollar in our circuit. A dollar. And that's what we'll do. We're going to throw a dollar at the circuit, add a couple resistors, and go through the circuit. And we're going to find out that we don't have to use beta to determine what the gain is. And that circuit will stabilize. The extra resistors and toys that we add to the circuit will help to stabilize it. But and a big but it is, we're going to have to go through more calculations. But, and a small but it is, they're all arithmetic. And they're all calculations that I know you have done before. We're going to get through the improved version of this circuit using Ohm's Law, Kirchhoff's Laws, and the 7 tenths of a volt law. And that's all we're going to need to solve the next circuit that we're going to look at. And for the most part, any of the circuits that we solve. Why? Because the non-transistor components are the boss of the circuit, and they all observe those same laws. How does that sound? Simple? That sounds fantastic. We'll have fun with that. Uh, we'll have that next part uh, tomorrow. We'll eliminate beta from our calculations. And at that point, once we've done that, then we can really start to get into how these things amplify. Okay? Because yeah, it sounds like beta is a huge junkie and we do not need to be feeding it. <laughs> no, beta is a big problem. It's a big problem. It uh, makes life really difficult to navigate through when you're trying to get an amplifier to work. Because if it gets too hot, you're screwed. And even if it gets cold, then beta, of course, goes down when it gets cold. So if you take it out, you know, you take your little Walkman or whatever with a cheap-ass amp in there out and it's cold outside, you're going to have a volume problem because your amplifier isn't pumping out enough juice. It's cold. And electrons don't want to move when it's cold. Do you? No. Well, they don't either. <laughs> So that's how it gets. All right, that's it for today. How are we doing on time? Uh, 10.40. Well, that sounds good. Is that income tax form? <laughs> how appropriate. We just, we just had to find.